Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sorting Hat Podcast, a show where everything and anything can and will be sorted. I, as always, am your host, Michael Barrett, joined by my co-host, Reed Bryce. They call him Michael, Michael, king of the nerd dorks. Wouldn't you agree? Even bigger than me. <laughs> Fucking roasted, dude. Did you... Oh, yeah, and I also just said I was going to stop swearing on the podcast. We're off to a great start. <laughs> you want to reset? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, uh, the basic conceit of our... <laughs> Uh, the basic <laughs> conceit of our podcast is that we have a fan or expert on a topic, and then we sort things within that topic into the various houses of Hogwarts. Today, we are joined once again by Jesse Gould, who is a zoological and environmental uh, educator. Welcome back to the podcast, Jesse. Thank you. And Good today, to you're going to be telling us about dolphin parts. Yes, <laughs> dolphin parts and pieces. Yes. <laughs> that we're... sounds like saying it like that sounds like we're going to be butchering a dolphin. We're... I want to just put out there, we are not going we to do that. We are dealing with the anatomy of a dolphin. Yeah, it's not going to be like, here's the most tender part of the dolphin steak. <laughs> uh, no, indeed. So for those uh, unfamiliar with Jesse who haven't listened to our previous episode on marine mammals, um, Jesse, you've worked with dolphins in the past correct uh down in florida yes correct uh how long thereabouts were you um dolphining <laughs> uh doing different things uh i guess collectively about seven years Whoa. um but professionally about two and a half three years i think i was um working directly with the dolphins mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so may, may i ask you a hard question just sure. to get right off the bat did you have, when you were working with the dolphins, did you, like, was it kind of like kids where you, like, did you have a favorite or, like, did you, like, say, oh, I love you all equally, but you secretly have a favorite? Uh, you, it's kind of one of those things where, like, secretly you have a favorite, but you love them all because they're all amazing. I don't imagine that they're listening to the podcast, so if you want to <laughs> say your favorite dolphin's name and just give them a shout out or her. Oh, that's okay. Well, I, I'd like to keep it a mystery. Wow, well, you- <laughs> You so look at, diplomatic. Looking, looking for some <laughs> some breaking news in the, just in the trying to cause drama in the marine mammal world. Don't give me nothing. Oh, there's already enough drama there. Maybe, <laughs> maybe by the end of this pod, you'll get Jesse to slip up. But uh, maybe, maybe. But uh, let shall shall we just dive straight into the parts of the dolphin? I just I, I don't know if you've intentionally said pod and dive, but they're all great puns right now. <laughs> yeah, dude, you are fu- firing on all dork cylinders today. It is purely coincidental. <laughs> I can't take responsibility for it. It just happened. Like. Have you ever had those moments where you say something like where you say something clever? Someone's like, that's great. And then you have that like moment where you either are like, do I own this accidental brilliance that my brain subconsciously did? You or, always own it. Uh, see, I, I always just feel guilty and I'm like, no, 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 I wasn't that clever. I, it just happened. Uh, welcome to anytime I make a joke and the and the reason people laugh is not because they're confused or I'm dumb. <laughs> like you, you've just hit on that third tier of like actual true comedy. Yeah, where it goes. I'm so dumb. It sometimes goes all the way back around to being uh, right. like a, a clever or mm-hmm. or I'll make a, a, a reference like a, like, oh, is that Oscar Wilde? And I'm like, absolutely. Let's talk about the pectoral flippers. All right. So the pectoral flippers are the two front flippers um, on the dolphin. They're basically used for steering when they're swimming around in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Uh, The coolest part about them is that they do actually have bones inside of them. So uh, the difference between a fin and a flipper is that the fins are just made of connective tissue, whereas the flippers are going to have bones in them and they can actually move them around. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you were to take an x-ray of a dolphin um, flipper, you'd actually see... Uh, bony structures that look pretty similar to the human hand so it's really cool um if anybody's interested go google that right now um so it's like a it's like a fin but it has like the sort of like finger sort of thing throughout it Mm -hmm. oh that's interesting and it does is it made up as of like bone bones or do you have like a lot of cartilage in there that's bone bones yep Ooh, Mm -hmm. bone bone time (laughs) and and do they um do they use the fins the same way that you would use uh like you know paddles and, or like a rudder on a ship? Is that like basically how it works too? Like, uh, kind of. So just like flippy flop. Yeah. So the um the dorsal fin, which we'll talk about um, next, is kind of going to be more of like a balance kind of keeping. Oh, that's like if more... it was a ship, um, because they're they're um shape their fusiform shape is very hydrodynamic so they're able to like, glide really easy through the water yeah and they've got their two front flippers kind of used for steering um and 
breaking as well. Uh-huh. Um, it's kind of neat if you watch them swim. Um, like you can see them like sometimes like kind of backpedaling and putting on mm-hmm. the brakes or, you know, using their, yeah, man, their flippers wheelies. to steer. It's, it's really cool. They're very... <laughs> Their ability to be so agile is so incredible, especially because they're just such big animals. Um, but it's also really funny because, like, um, working with them, you know, you have these animals and they're so aware of where you are and they're so aware of where their bodies are. And then they'll just accidentally run into something else. And you're just like, OK. <laughs> so even though you have all these, like, you know, great adaptations and you have all these heightened senses, even you run into a wall sometimes. Man, too, so that's cool. so that's really good for my <laughs> self-esteem to know that there are also clumsy dolphins. Yeah. Because they just seem like they have it all together. <laughs> they do. But as as we uh previously said on uh on our mammals, our marine mammals podcast, they are Slytherin. Or Atlantic bottlenose dolphins are Slytherin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think some of that just comes from Perhaps a degree of pride to them, like just thinking that they're oh. they're all the hot. And it's in and it's in my beta nature to to defer to to an animal like that. Then, <laughs> dude, if the dolphins ever get up on land and like we own things now, I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> you, this you is want, your land now. They have teeth. I'm not trying to get bit. <laughs> all humans have teeth. <laughs> yeah, that's most why. animals have teeth. Yeah, and, the, and, and you know what? what is, I don't want to get bit. What so. is your relationship with your cats? When you come home, is it do, do they sleep in the bed? Okay, uh, <laughs> I cook all their meals for them. That's true. I bathe them. They are basically like uh, Marie Antoinette. <laughs> the the uh, not allowed to leave the house, but they get taken care of. <laughs> I recently saw that the Sofia Coppola film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you like it? I did. It's a it's a little weird. In just like the way there's not really any conflict, it just sort of like roams from beat to beat. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? I have only seen part of it. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, (laughs) I I, I thought it was okay. I was on a plane like it. It was fine. Like I thought it was well shot for sure. And she does a great job. I don't know. It felt like it was trying to like tell somebody's story. But oh, I don't but have enough money to understand. Like, I didn't come from enough money to understand that story. There's, there's <laughs> arguably no point of view on these <laughs> events. Like, it's it's very weird how sterile it feels. Like, it goes, oh, there's, like, there's, uh you know, decadence around. But that's not, like, uh it, it's just, like, that was a fact. That's not. Yeah. However, I, like. I like more and more like I, I will give I will give it to Coppola that she doesn't necessarily uh she doesn't necessarily feel like she has to hold her audience's hand and explain what's going oh, on at every sure. second. She's like, we'll have some patient moments. We'll just have some moments where there's not a whole lot of dialogue. And not, there's not too many other American directors who really work that way. She's so. got a good soundtrack on that, too. She but, always she always yeah, brings I mean, the beats. Uh, <laughs> but oh, yeah. Animals. So the other the <laughs> other thing, the other thing I was going to say when you just uh, were talking about how you prepare all the like food for your cats mm-hmm. is the difference in like how um, dogs and cats sort of are view things where like uh, dogs view it as like uh, dogs view that sort of affection and everything is like gods passing things down and cats view it as I am the god in that situation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's like a. It's like a, the sort of thing that like would go on like a coffee mug that you would give to your aunt because you're like, I don't I know. You, I know you like cats. Right. I, know, I know you like cats. So I'm going to get you a mug that says uh, to to dogs. You are God to cats. They are God. Yeah. And then it'll just have like a sassy little looking cat with like a lightning bolt in its hand or something. Yeah, it's it's the like uh saturday morning cartoon or sunday morning cartoon like rough sketch yeah. political cartoon <laughs> almost <laughs> um so uh it so you said that the, it's a pectoral fin so is that where it starts attaching flipper like, pectoral flipper, flipper. Mm-hmm. crud <sighs> flippers <laughs> and fins i'm already getting confused <laughs> uh so it's like it's connected up into the chest muscles um it's, so i'm not exactly sure if it's connected to, like or maybe are their pecs too, like but... a slightly different placed in my body because it's a different animal <laughs> it's it's similar mammalian anatomy uh i just I guess kind of like adapted to the ocean mm-hmm. so yeah they're going to kind of come off of that pectoral area um up on there can mm-hmm. they get <laughs> the reason i'm asking this is because can uh can animals like build i know like i've seen 
uh, beefy dogs can are can can can, uh, can can dolphins ever be jacked? Like, have you ever seen like a dolphin with like Terry Crews pecs? I have never seen a dolphin with just like abs and pecs. Yeah, but you know what? They're swimming around all the time. <laughs> They're probably all in shape. What am I asking? Today, my brain is mush. Why are you letting me talk still? So the, the thing to consider with a dolphin is they are going to have a layer of blubber on their bodies, yeah. too. So they're never really going to be, like, super ripped. Okay. Well, that yeah. makes them more accessible to me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they're definitely muscular, for sure. So where do we where do we think we're sorting this one? I mean, it seems pretty pragmatic and practical. But at the same time, I think most of what we're going to be addressing today is going to be serving a function for the dolphin oh yeah we're not doing the like the the, the, uh the inside of the elbow <laughs> right um i mean it's handling direction largely which i associate i mean it i feel it's either a gryffindor or a ravenclaw i'm kind of leading towards ravenclaw okay yeah i mean the ravenclaw angle purely on maneuverability is like a large one but then i'm thinking purely on like forward thrust being a gryffindor sort of angle now i would actually say uh if you get like more metaphorical into it uh what direction it is is sort of like what's the vision what do we where do we want to go necessarily like not how we're going to get there sure so i because i would usually put raven clauses that i'm going to figure out the the logistics to get us there and get us there as efficiently as possible Mm -hmm. whereas with direction it's kind of like I need to kind of understand my gut and my my courage place that I know where I'm going. So mm. I, that's why I would give it the edge to Gryffindor myself. Mm. But I have two Ravenclaws who are in front of me and that makes them smarter than me. So I will defer to you because you got teeth. <laughs> uh, moving, <laughs> moving on to the dorsal fin. We're, we're into fin town. Yes. So the uh, dorsal fin as opposed to the flipper, it has the bones inside of it. It's just connective tissue, similar mm-hmm. to the tips of our noses or to our ears. Um, so, like I kind of mentioned earlier, that's going to bring balance as these animals are cruising through the water. Um, it depends on the species of dolphin, how fast they can get. But, for instance, like the, the bottlenose dolphin, they're typically going to cruise at just a couple miles an hour. Um, mm-hmm. But they can go um, faster. Like, they can get up to about 20 miles an hour um, if they're really whoa that's good, man. um but generally like just like you know we can run really fast but i mean <laughs> some I, of us, I can't run really fast okay yeah, I was gonna, some I was of us like, can run really fast you but, see me run you would not say that <laughs> yeah, my my i'm like a 12 minute mile um <laughs> but you know typically we're not going to be going that fast all the time because um even us as animals we want to conserve our energy um I, I often imagine like if um animals could actually like conceptualize what we do as exercise they would just be like why are they doing that are they doing that like what are they running from what is the point of this because a lot of times when animals use their energy it's for For a purpose purpose. i was thinking about that the other day Mm -hmm. and i just realized what uh exercise actually is and it made (laughs) me it blew my freaking mind i was like i i I recently joined a gym you're all welcome uh (laughs) and i was i was lifting up a heavy weight as you do and i realized this is just what rich people did back in the old days when they didn't have enough physical labor to do by being a peasant. Because a pe- your gym when you were a peasant was you just had to haul things for rich people and you had to plant things. And and, and at the gym, you're just you're just like basically uh, doing a simulation of hard labor. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> or or running away from something scary like a predator, yeah, the, except you're doing it stationary. You're the te- most effective form of hard labor or running away from a, an animal. It's, it's like, I got to have a nice peasant butt, but I don't want those peasant calluses. Mm-hmm. But while I get that peasant butt, I want to be <laughs> watching my favorite shows. <laughs> uh, if um If this part of the dolphin gets affected... Are there any other parts uh, of the dolphin, like how our inner ears affect our balance? Are there any other parts that affect the dolphin's balance, or is this basically it? No, no. So um, it just kind of helps maintain balance while they're swimming, but they they have the same um, inner ear balance thing going on as we like, do, it, as far as I know. Um, so like they have other ways to kind of. Um, I don't know of any particular 
research done on a dolphin that like lost i don't know of any um anything where like a dolphin oh, like, okay. lost so, to their dorsal fin or yeah, anything like my that my question was like if they if they like lost it or got like injured would they just like start spinning in circles or like Aww. what would what would what would even hypothetically happen if they couldn't use it they would probably still be able to compensate just fine because um there are instances of dolphins where it's been like injured or serrated um you know like cut by a boat propeller and it's just kind of like Floppy and weird mm-hmm. looking. Mm. Um, so those animals have compensated just fine. Um, even with like the killer whales where some of the dorsal fins yeah. flop over. Um, that occurs in the wild as well. Why um, does that happen to orcas? So the re- there's no solid re- uh, um, evidence or not evidence. Um, there's no solid conclusions yet. Mm-hmm. Um, what scientists think is that. Um, so like I said, it does also happen out in the wild. Uh, it just doesn't seem to be as common. Um as we see with the killer whales as um, under human care. But with the dorsal fin, it's all connective tissue. So if you've got a five foot tall dorsal fin Mm -hmm. um, and you're spending a lot of time up at the surface, gravity could affect that dorsal fin and it could kind of help it to, or not help it, but like it may start to kind of collapse like down a, a little bit. Is it like the pressure of the water, like of you like rising up to like breach the the surface, or um, what it might be is like if an animal is kind of spending a lot of time at the surface, um, there's not going to be the water kind of like holding it. Whereas if they're like hanging oh, out, oh, I get gotcha. you. Yeah, um, like when your hair when you go in the bathtub and your hair starts floating, like I'm a mermaid. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, so that's just kind of like one idea. Um, another idea is that it could actually be genetic. Um, if you do look at um, some of the killer whales under human care, a lot of the ones that have dorsal fins that are um, kind of folded over, um, their parent tends to have one that mm-hmm. is shaped similarly. So it could also be genetic. Um, right now, as far as um, research, though, is concerned, there's no definite answer. Like, mm-hmm. we don't really know yet, but no, kind of the idea is. That leads me into our new segment I like to call Reed's Conspiracy Corner. Well, I will tell you <laughs> the actual reason. Reed's Conspiracy Corner. Um, so in the last one, we learned... Uh, that uh, marine a- uh, mammals, when they are born, because they are mammals, they will have a, a small layer of hair on their body. Uh, but these ant mammals don't realize it until they're much older. And they go, oh, no, I have a bald head. <laughs> so what they're actually doing is creating a comb over effect <laughs> so that they can they can uh, give the impression that they are still virile and ready to get back out there after their divorce. This has been Reed's Conspiracy Corner. Ba-da-da-da. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, we spent a lot of money on that intro outro. <laughs> like way too much it, money. It sounds it. Just sounds of money. Yeah. Th- we were told some... it was Danny Elfman, but <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> so there's no conclusive evidence mm-hmm. on just what causes that sort of I guess curvature. there's no um, conclusive decisions made mm-hmm. as to like why it happens. Um, just because... I guess I actually don't know why Mm -hmm. like scientists don't have like a definite answer yet. Um, but I don't it know. happens it, both under human care and out in the wild, so it doesn't it doesn't seem to be something that's unnaturally occurring in oh, the, okay. the animals. So. I know the scientists are like just doing their best and, mm-hmm. and like knowing that like science is always going to be like a, a taffy, like stretchy and, and changing flexible thing, uh instead of like a rigid like plank board thing. Uh but it blows my mind every time I find out something that I assumed we had on lockdown in terms of understanding the science, and then it's just like no, just one of us tried it one day and it worked, man. Like aspirin, it's either aspirin or Tylenol. Are mm-hmm. those the same thing? Mm. Acetophenamine and, and ibuprofen. Yeah, like one those. of them, we just know that it works. We don't know why. Hmm. Or like one of those like very simple pain meds. I, mm-hmm. I, but I was just like, wait, so wait, we, we don't have like we we can we have we we've broken down the human genome. How do we not know how aspirin works? There's so much science still out there to be figured out, and like that's one of the things I love about science. And it's one of those things that like yeah, you think like you're like oh, science has got all this stuff you know wrapped yeah. up, but really there's so much of it left to be discovered and figured out, and there's just so many unanswered questions in the universe. And I think that's awesome. Yeah, and that's why I like doing these science episodes because I'm really hoping some kid out there is like I'll figure it out for you, Rita yeah. Brothers. Why aspirin works? Please tell me before I die, child. All right. And so where are we going to sort this one? Do you I think? mean, I am also leaning towards Ravenclaw based on the balance thing. <laughs> We're going to yep. just learn that this is a, 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 although, a clean, mean Ravenclaw machine, the although dolphin. Although balance could be argued as a, like, zen sort of balance mm-hmm. thing, which would lean you towards Hufflepuff. Mm. Or it could be uh, it could be balance as in law and order, which mm. would be Ravenclaw. You're bringing it back. I was trying to bounce it out, but 
Where do you feel, Jesse? Mm, I think with this one, let's, let's mix it up. Let's put it in Hufflepuff. Hell yeah. Yeah. Sorted. Yeah. Moving on. Let's cool. go to the tail flukes. Tail flukes. So moving down the dolphin's body. Um, so it is tail flukes. It's plural because there's two, um, yes. two flukes there at the bottom. Uh, like the dorsal fin, it's made up of connective tissue. Mm-hmm. Um, and the interesting thing about the um, the tail fluke, so not only does it work in conjunction with the next part that we're talking with, the kind of not power. Not a fluke. Oh, so I'm so sorry. I'm going to see myself out. <laughs> <laughs> see footsteps and a door close. Yep. <laughs> um, so it's, the dolphins are going to use that to pump up and down, um, unlike a fish, which moves their tail back and forth, um, to pro- propel themselves forward. Mm-hmm. That area is also considered their quote unquote fingerprint area. So because it's connective tissue, the edge along the bottom will wear down over time and no two edges are going to wear down the same. So not only like genetically is there going to be slight differences in size and shape of their their tails, um, but the edges are also going to wear down. So scientists can actually take um, photographs of those areas to identify them and the same with the dorsal fins because the edge the trailing edge of the dorsal fin is going to wear down over time too so when scientists are studying um, these animals out in the wild if you have ever wondered how they keep track of them all they'll take photographs and compare the photographs um to see who's who and who's doing what that's amazing mm-hmm. and that now makes me like desperate to under- understand uh how we would then identify another marine mammal known as the mermaid because they have the tail, but they also have fingers. Well, it's weirder than that because they have a tail that moves like a dolphin, but is scaled like a fish. Mm. Because you were saying that fish, they move in a fluttery back and forth Mm -hmm. motion as opposed to an up and down like a dolphin, but mermaids do an up and down, but have scales like If a you're fish. a mermaid out there listening, can you please tell <laughs> us if you use your fingers or your tails to unlock your phone? Well, I think I think it's probably a situation where they're still using their fingers because the scales would overlay the fingerprintage of the tail. Keep in mind, Michael, I mean, you're talking about the the highly, highly unscientific depictions of mermaids in the media. No, you're very right. Like you're they, very right. I'm glad know. that you curbed me like that because I am trying to be more woke about, uh, you know, in mermaid. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> On point, guys. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm also wondering if if the tail is the thumbprint, uh, are they also using dental records to... Tr- to identify the body? What are you well, talking I'm about? Do- no, I'm just thinking like, I'm, I'm thinking like, like humans do, uh, do dolphins have like the dental records that could also verify who they are? Or are they in that weird camp where it's like shark have like 60 trillion teeth that are just like shedding out of their mouth every... Oh, God. So um, they aren't like the sharks where they're constantly replacing their teeth. Um they do get one set of teeth for their lifetime. Um, it's 88 to 100 teeth. Um, they are cone-shaped teeth. Uh, if you're studying the animals out in the wild, it's not really going to be your best, um, easy to access mm-hmm. source of information because you'd have to, you know, catch the animal and then, which, um, you know, can be done. Uh, but you know, photographing from a distance a dorsal fin to identify an animal's a lot easier yeah so. okay <laughs> hey, you know what you just gave us a bunch of info about dolphin teeth apart i'm not even sure we were we were playing to sort no not at all that's a bonus sort for y'all folks and i think that's a slytherin you think <laughs> teeth are a slytherin they're the, they're, they're the only part that are their only function is like destruction and breaking things down sure. so there's more cool things about the teeth if we want to have this bonus let's do of course that i do um so I was, I was actually going to surprise you guys with teeth later. So we're just doing Ooh. it now. Um, so the teeth are super cool. Um, they are cone shaped, like I said, um, which I remember I mentioned last time um, on the podcast, the difference between a dolphin and porpoise that you can always rely on is the shape of the teeth because the porpoise has a spade shaped tooth and the dorsal, uh, the dolphin has a cone shaped tooth. Um, over time, their teeth will wear down. So the older the dolphin gets, the flatter their teeth will become mm-hmm. just because they're using their, their teeth all the time. Um, they're not necessarily using them for like biting through something or, or chewing, but they are going to use those to catch their prey, um, get it, you know, wrangle that fish into its mouth um they use it to interact with one another it's actually very common for dolphins to um use their teeth 
with each other. Um, they'll actually, uh, dolphins will have these long kind of, it looks like you took a rake and made a, a mark in the sand. It's called a rake mark. Mm -hmm. And it's just from playing with each other, kind of rough and tough. If you're, you know, a big 500 pound animal, that's what you do. Um, so, uh, they'll leave rake marks on each other. Um, basically their, their like mouths. Cats. Yeah, their mouths are their are their uh, hands essentially. Like they they don't have hands like we do. Right. So they're going to explore their environments with their with their mouth and their teeth. So their teeth do tend to wear down. Another interesting thing about their teeth is that just like a tree, they will get rings on their teeth. So you can actually age a dolphin um, by doing a tooth um, analysis. Do you still feel that they're Slytherin? <laughs> I, pro I probably would would still put it at Slytherin because uh, uh, exclusive in that they only get one set because. Uh, from sharks to even us we get at least two uh <laughs> and i don't think we even deserve to be quite honest we don't deserve them <laughs> because we don't take care of them very well i mean you know you're a little kid when you get the first one you don't know yeah you're like <laughs> yeah those even are your, now those are your training can kids. i say can i ever ever in my life have said that when the dentist has asked me have you been flossing that i can say yes and not be a liar I'll leave that for you to decide. <laughs> You've got a pretty good mouth on you. But it, yeah, it, it, it's also how uh, they roughhouse with each other, which is kind of aggressive. Uh, sure. Uh, and I'm not necessarily putting a, like a bad value judgment on this or, or on Slytherins. I'm just saying like if you're if you are associating something with something that like can uh, destroy, but also like something that is exclusive and is something, you know, uh, that it, I just think it's a Slytherin. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let's go with Slytherin. Yeah, All right. <laughs> because we still need to deal with the tail fluke. Are we saying what? Mm. Where's that tail fluke landing? Ooh, um, I'm gonna put that one in Gryffindor because it's kind of propelling, literally propelling the dolphin forward. Oh yeah, into action. I like that. Let's cool. move on to the cudgel peduncle. <laughs> so the, that sounds like Benedict Cumberbatch's cousin or something. <laughs> what is that one again? The coddle peduncle. Oh, coddle peduncle. <laughs> All right, get ready for me to laugh. I Every wrote time it down we say incorrectly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The coddle peduncle. Right. Yes. Coddle um, peduncle. Basically, all that means is that it's close to the tail area. So um, the coddle peduncle is the area between the dorsal fin and the tail fluke. Um, and that is just a big muscular area. Um, that's the powerhouse of the animal. That's where all that, you know, speed and just zooming and zipping through the water is going to come from mm -hmm. um this isn't exclusive to the caudal peduncle but we're going to go with it because i didn't know where else to fit this in but uh the coloration of a dolphin you are going to notice that the top half of the dolphin is going to be darker so the top half of the caudal peduncle too is going to be a darker gray uh dolphin rolls over and its belly is going to be a lighter coloration um mm -hmm. the belly coloration is actually um determined by genetics so they're oh. um like if you compare, take like 15 dolphins and look at all their bellies, they're all going to be a little bit different. Same with the coloration on the rest of their body too. It's just a little easier to see with, on the lighter um, Is that like that how we have a uh, melanin variation on our skin? Mm -hmm. So like sometimes they'll have freckles. Sometimes their bellies will be a little bit more pink. Sometimes they'll be a little bit darker. Like it's... Dolphins it's, can have freckles? Yeah, it's That's really cute. cute. <laughs> yeah, it's really cute. Um, so that um, that coloration is actually a form of camouflage called counter shading. So if they're in the water and there's predator or prey above them and the that animal's looking down, the darker back is going to help the dolphins to blend in with the environment beneath them. And then if the animal's mm -hmm. looking up, it'll help them blend in with the surface. Yep. So the sunlight filtering through, it's they're going to blend in with it. That's really clever. Yeah. You said this was uh, this is like the powerhouse of of the dolphin. Uh, mm -hmm. But it also has like the most adorable name. <laughs> this reminds me of like the dude when you go to prison, like when you go to prison, and <laughs> you know when and, you go to prison, uh, like you do. And uh, the, you you're like you you got you're like I gotta I gotta beat up the the toughest guy here so that everyone knows I'm a tough guy. But then you find out it, the, the the toughest guy in the prison's always named like Baby Cutie or something. <laughs> That's what I feel like with the is, is it Cuddle Peduncle? Cuddle Peduncle. <laughs> That sounds like a Nick Jr. show. <laughs> Yo, to, if, it's time for Cuddle Peduncle. Yeah, if Cuddle Peduncle, it'd be like kind of in the same realm as, have you seen Kipper? The, oh, yeah, Kipper's cute. Yeah, like it'd have that art style and it'd just, you know, be some do adorable dolphin named Cuddle Peduncle who like, <laughs> We come to a party, party. And, has a, and has, yeah, has a bunch of fun ocean dwelling friends. As a mermaid friend? May, yeah, I mean, who, like, th that would probably be the, maybe Coddle Peduncle is, like, 
the best friend of the mermaid mm. friend because everybody's gonna want that like closer although although we've but the got one like, who's Peppa always Pig. messing up it's like the it would be the read and once an episode everyone would go cuddle foot uncle <laughs> You're so delighted by yourself I'm, in this I'm moment. Gonna, I'm, I'm transitioning again into a dolphin like all those transphobes always say, and I'm changing my name to Cuddle Peduncle. <laughs> Where do we feel that this falls? Mm, well, I'm thinking either Gryffindor, because again, kind of literally yeah, the, propelling the forward. The power angle. But if we're including the counter shading, which I guess isn't limited to the Cuddle Peduncle area, but um, if we're including that, that's kind of clever, so it could be Ravenclaw. Oh, so. no, I would say it's probably Slytherin. Uh, Ooh, wait, why are you saying well, that? You're on, right, yeah. On the cleverness no, factor, it's like really taking in the environment and being like, I can do something with this. I'm being a little bit inventive. Mm -hmm. Let's go with Slytherin for this one. Yeah. Because I always feel like Gryffindor and Slytherin are so close. They are. They are. They like. I always say like the only difference is that Gryffindors ultimately care about the greater good, whereas a Slytherin is able to be like, I have vision. Mm -hmm. And so like what I need to do for myself is ultimately the best or what I need to do for my family. That's uh, the way, that's the way yeah. I see it. But yeah, but it's like yeah. a hair's way from being each other, in my opinion. <laughs> Let's deal with the belly button. <laughs> Which like, that's fun. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I'm excited about this one. Can they have any, any Zerati's like us? Um, I've never really seen one with like a full on Audi. Um, they do just like us kind of differ a little bit um, from one another. But um, so basically on the opposite side of the like if the, if you're looking at a dolphin from the side and the dorsal fin, basically you just go to the other side and right around there is going to be the belly button in the middle of the belly, of course. Yeah. Um, so dolphins are mammals like us. So since they're mammals, they've got live birth. So they're also going to have a belly button just like us. Um Belly buttons are probably my favorite spot on a dolphin, just because you never really think about a dolphin having a belly button. So, like, oh, man, and that was actually one of my favorite things to do um, when we would do educational programs would be to show people the belly button. Cause like, hey, like, <laughs> just like we're mammals, they're mammals. Like, look at this, we both have belly buttons, and I just think that's yeah, a really cool really, connection. You because like you never think about because most animals just like plop on out and they just like start <laughs> running away. All all of us have uh, umbilical cords, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and like. So do usually people's uh, umbilical cords, like, not people's, <laughs> uh, do animals, like, does that usually, like, uh, snap while they're still in utero, or do I they come out and, and, and then just snap apart, which is terrifying to think about? Uh, it usually breaks apart during the birthing process. So. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if a human baby was kind of like, like, any sort of, like, moose or anything like that, that it just gets going and the baby comes out of the mom and just starts running away? <laughs> Honestly, I think like humans are so poorly adapted to having babies compared to the rest of the animal kingdom. Our babies suck. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like a moose, like literally will just like plop down and like a little bit later, it's just like, all right, I'm up and walking around. And yeah, dude, like <laughs> baby bison, they'll leave that kid behind if it's not ready. That kid, so that kid get, get, gets up, he has a job already. It's like, God, God, God let's do this. I'm ready to work. <laughs> but back to <laughs> dolphin birth. Um, uh -huh. Really cute. After um, the baby is born. Uh, they actually have little fetal folds on their body um, from basically just the birthing process. Like they're like so, they're like a, a wrinkle from the yeah. like all wrinkly from the bathtub. Yeah. Oh my it's gosh, like little... they're like a sharpe. <laughs> I'm gonna look up nothing but baby dolphins tonight, probably. <laughs> so yeah, baby dolphins are super cool. Um, I remember I mentioned this last time. Um, when they are born, they do have a tiny little mustache on their mm -hmm. rostrum. Excuse me. <laughs> So again, they are mammals. So um, the basic things of being a mammal, you got a backbone. You're warm blooded, so mm -hmm. they are also warm blooded. You're gonna be born live, so you've got that belly button. Got all three of um, those. Yep. Fun. You you breathe oxygen, which yep. we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. They also have hair. Um, yeah. So the um, hairs on their rostrum when they're born um, will actually. It's not. Some scientists think that they may be used to help figure out where to nurse on their mother. Um, it's not. The Super. follicles are like like giving them like tiny little things like yeah oh, they you, might you, be able to like kind of like help them the feel, feel it out. yeah um so they um typically dolphins do typically nurse underwater um and when they do nurse they will take their tongues and form a, a straw like if you were to take your tongue and like fold it mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and they have little fringes on their tongue which kind of interlock to make a nice um water tight seal so they'll nurse from their mom's underwater like that um from the mom's mammary glands but yeah so about a week after they're born all those little hair follicles fall out uh, so <laughs> and that uh, and that's uh yeah you listed off everything i had all of those except for the mustache and that's how my parents were like that's a human baby <laughs> but 
back to that belly button. Yes. Uh, are there any other little bits of info that we need to know about the button Do they ever, before we get a sortin'? Because they're in the water, they never get lint. Mm. They are lint free. Mm-hmm. All right. It's just like, <laughs> it's one of the cutest parts of, like, a belly button. How is it not a Hufflepuff? Because <laughs> even just the word button is Hufflepuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we love to push them, and we love to sew them, and maybe even just collect them. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, let's, yeah, let's just go with the belly button is a Hufflepuff. Cool. Acro- across the board, <laughs> dolphin or no. Every belly button. Every belly button. Every button. You tell me a button that's not a Hufflepuff. Yes. Except for maybe the one that fires nukes. But even that has two-factor authentication. And I want to say that the safety factor of that makes it a Hufflepuff. All right. (laughs) Let us shift on. We sort of started to touch on it a little bit with the rostrum. Yes. So um, the rostrum is going to be that beak-like part of the dolphin. Um, A lot of people call it a beak. You want to be fancy, it's a rostrum. Um. So that area um, houses the teeth. This was the part where I was going to be like, hey, dolphin teeth are cool. But now we know dolphin teeth are cool. Uh, We also know that dolphin tongues are cool because of the little fringes when they're um, when they're babies. Um, They do kind of tend to wear down as they age, but you can still kind of see a little bit of it um, when they're older, too. Um, But the rostrum is really interesting because of the way that it's shaped. Uh, You know, you always hear people talk about like the dolphin smile and like, oh, you know, Flipper looks so happy, everything. Um, Their mouths are shaped like that. They can't change the way (laughs) that they look. They're the opposite of resting bitch face. They have resting dolphin smile. (laughs) Yes, exactly. So the rostrum is permanently kind of shaped like that one. um, They don't like you. (laughs) <laughs> you will never know they're just gonna smile at you anyway um but the one of the the um thoughts behind why that might be shaped that way is actually to help push out water um when they're eating because mm. they don't want to swallow an excess amount of salt water because they're going to you know just like us like they don't want too much salt in their bodies um so the shape of that mouth can actually help squish the water out and even if you look at a dolphin like close its mouth you'll see like these little like, streams of water just kind of coming out of the side oh, of their mouth. Whoa. So um, that's one of the thoughts as to why it might be shaped that way. I see. So I find that really, um, really fascinating. Um, rostrum too, uh, that area also has the jawbone, which I know I mentioned echolocation last time, but it's worth mm-hmm. saying again. Um, so when it often uses its echolocation, they're going to project um, that echolocation through their forehead out into their environment. It's mm-hmm. going to bounce off objects and things in their environment and come back to them Um through their lower jawbone, which is hollow and full, uh, filled with a, a, a viscous liquid that will help transmit those sounds up into their ears. Whoa. So echolocation is just really cool. Um, I think last time we said, what, what would you say? They were the the dolphins, wait, bats of the sea? Yeah, they're mm-hmm. the bats of the sea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, the famous saying, that dolphins are the bats of the sea. I mm-hmm. don't know why I get made fun of for this. I, I heard it in a, a Jacques Cousteau documentary called... <laughs> Uh, sea time. <laughs> All right. This was one of those times where I was like, and Reed's going to knock it out of the. Oh, no, no. Nope. Sometimes I bunt it real hard. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, here's a question I probably should have uh, thought to ask when I was like a third grader. Because uh, you were talking about how dolphins don't want to get too much seawater. Mm-hmm. As mammals, do they also like, uh, is there an issue if they have too much, like you said, like too much uh, salt water in their system for hydration? And if so, do, do marine mammals have like a filtration system? Yes. So um, there's lots of little adaptions across their body to help keep out um, excess salt water. They are going to get all of their freshwater hydrations need met just from the food that they eat. There are other marine oh. mammals that will drink freshwater, like manatees will go to freshwater areas right. and they can drink that freshwater. Um, but like dolphins, for instance, aren't going to be drinking the salt water at all. Yeah. Uh, so, like the shape of the mouth can help with that. Um, they also their throats, um, basically like form around their food as they're swallowing it. Whoa. So there's not a lot of extra space for water to get into their bodies. Oh whoa. Um, yeah. They're making a watertight seal. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, and then they also have highly specialized kidneys that actually look like bunches of grapes to help filter out all the excess salt that's going to be just a part of their lives so gotcha yeah no i forgot i forgot that like uh also like all of the there's moisture in all the food that we eat and that helps us to stay hydrated (laughs) so i'm definitely feeling that the rostrum is a ravenclaw 
I feel that this one, <laughs> like from the fact that it's working off sonar and the fact that it's got like that water like exclusion system basically super adapted uh in the in the nick jr show that i'm developing <laughs> off of these dolphin boards rostrum is the nerd that is always telling everybody what to do oh so you're in this show each there's, dolphin there's a, is named after a part of a dolphin are you telling me that rostrum is not the name of like a nerd character who's like not necessarily antagonistic well you also just had cuddle peduncle be the klutz so you're basically just creating like the absolute sandlot of <laughs> dolphins. I'm just saying these names are cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, I I think this is definitely a Ravenclaw. This is like this is like the the spy gadgetry for the <laughs> for them. It's like all the stuff that's like James Bond like goes into the water and all of a sudden he goes and like so like it just makes it so like he's like watertight based off of like it closing up and he's like wow Q you really worked hard on this. <laughs> Uh, let's close out with the blowhole. Yes. So. <laughs> I made them save the blowhole for the end because we all know you all just wanted to know what the blowhole was. It's like when people go to a Smash Mouth concert and they just expect them to play All Star for the whole time. But Smash Mouth has many great hits. <laughs> Such as? The blowhole. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured people are going to just listen hear the blowhole and be like, that's all I needed to know. Turn it off. Fair so, enough. Fair that's enough. Relaxed. I mean, it, let's do it. All right. <laughs> so um, back to dolphins being mammals. They are um, going to breathe air. So that's what the blowhole is mainly for. Um, just like we have two nasal cavities, um, dolphins do as well. Um, oh. But the resting um, state of the blowhole is closed, which is mm-hmm. a really great adaptation if you live in the ocean because if you have to actually like think about closing your nose every time you went underwater would be a lot but they are um, conscious breathers so they do have to um, think about opening up that bowl and taking that breath of air oh god now what you just <laughs> did was everybody listening to this you is have been actively being like <laughs> you were automatic <laughs> your, your breathing apparatus was on automatic and now you are doing it manually yep <laughs> you have no control of your own body <laughs> So anyway, uh, so is it kind of like a like a sphincter sort of like muscle thing where like uh, like the pressure of, of like the air like or like being like I'm time to breathe that's what opens it up or what uh, do so you mean by it's closed? Uh, kind of like with I well since we can't really tap into know what a dolphin's thinking I'd imagine it's um, more kind of like when we hold our breath for a while like our bodies give us signs that it's time to breathe yeah so that would their bodies would indicate. Time to go up and take a breath. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so they do actually have to think about it. The coolest and craziest part of this is because they are conscious breathers, they can't zonk out and go to sleep like we can. So just like us, they've got two hemispheres to their brains. But what they'll do is they will turn off and rest one half of their brain while the other one stays active. Uh, one eye usually stays open. They're going to be watching their environment, which is important. If you are an animal that lives in an unpredictable world, you need to keep an eye out. You need to make sure predators aren't around. You need to make sure your baby's safe. Um, if food comes along, they're opportunistic feeders, so they're going to need to wake up and go after their food because if you're napping through lunch, you might not get lunch that day. Um, so like if you're out in the wild. are always literally sleeping with one eye open. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so scientists estimate that throughout the day, um, they probably get about eight hours of sleep and they'll just kind of alternate sides of their brain um, as they're resting. Uh, like if they're out in the wild, you know, they're probably going to do it whenever it's safe to whatnot. Um, dolphins um, under human care probably are more likely to rest to like, you know, when people are gone for the day and, you know, it's less things going on. So, yeah. but you can generally tell when a dolphin's um, <clears throat> napping because they'll kind of do this little, um, it's called logging. And they just kind of float at the surface like a little log. And sometimes they'll kind of shift sides that they're leaning towards or they'll even just kind of swim like really slow circles sometimes. Um, one of the facilities that I worked at, um, the dolphins actually went down to the bottom of their um, habitat and they would rest there. Um, take a little nap, come up for the surface for air. Um, so usually <laughs> they're going to rest um, just a couple minutes um, at a time, sometimes even just a couple of seconds at a time. So. Oh, so they're just like cat napping all the time. Mm-hmm. S- forgive me on this, and th- as it might be passing into more neuroscience outside of your uh-huh. knowledge base, but are dolphins, I, well, I'm just thinking like with the 
right side and left side of the human brain, those are attributed to like more creative or more analytical. (laughs) Is that I'm just thinking like if humans could train themselves to do that sort of thing. You definitely would, Michael. You'd be like. I can get eight more hours in my day. Like to do if if I could oh take God, I could do that, I would totally if I could do that. Have sleep and be like writing <laughs> like a creative piece, and then wake up and the analytical side of me do deal on the grammar. Mm-hmm. Like, how great would that be? But uh, I do agree with you where you're going. I do think this is a Ravenclaw, but this is a Ravenclaw. Who's oh, I wasn't even. I just was like marveling at like how crazy that would be. You also, were just I, appreciating it. That's yeah, I really know it's was. A Ravenclaw, you're impressed. But also at the same time, I'm wondering: do uh, dolphins and other marine life share that similarity with humans? In like, do they have like cognitive moron with one side of their? What you call me? I I heard myself say it, and I knew that you were going to call out the moron <laughs> thing. It wasn't intentional. I heard it though. Uh, but do you feel do dolphins have like a cognitive side and the creative side? I don't of the brain? think there's been any research to that that I know of, at least. Who's um, the most I also famous feel like, poet dolphin. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Arca floaties. <laughs> Yes, that's like, not even. No, I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, as far as I know, there hasn't been any research into that. Um, doesn't mean that there hasn't been, but I feel like that would be a really difficult thing to quantify. Sure. Um, but that is kind of fascinating. So my ultimate answer is I have no idea if they have like a more creative and analytical side or not. Hmm. Uh, but that's really, really fascinating to ponder. I, I like this because I think this is a Ravenclaw, but I think this is the Ravenclaw who's also a conspiracy theorist because like they're like, I'm going to know everything and I'm not going to sleep until I do. Mm. I'll sleep when I'm dead or oh, I can take two minutes. Cat naps. Learn that on Reddit. <laughs> like that's the kind of Ravenclaw I think this is like a super, super smart guy, but also just so paranoid. Right. Um. But, well, that's on the brain, but we're trying to sort the blowhole. Which I do have more cool things to talk about. Oh, well, okay. then the brain of the dolphin is, the, a, is, I mean, a, is a Ravenclaw. This is also kind of like the brain for most things probably going to be a Ravenclaw. <laughs> Not mine. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tell us more cool facts about the blowhole, so Jesse. The- the blowhole is actually where all of the sounds that the dolphin makes comes from. So what? I know a lot of times, like in TV shows and stuff, it like he like can flip like, his mouth when he's gonna yeah, yeah yeah. Um, so there's no sounds that come from their mouth. Um, the uh oh my sounds are actually made from pushing air through the blowhole and manipulating the muscles around to make different clicks and whistles and raspberry sounds. So um, yeah, wow. it's, it's not from their mouth. Uh, the blowhole actually like the um. The hole connects to the lungs. The mouth connects to the stomach. Um, they're not gonna have the crazy. Oh whoa! Like, like how That's we like sometimes more... we'll like accidentally like drink while we're breathing or something and choke yeah. ourselves. Like don't Gosh, don't have that. Problem. Humans are built so dumb. <laughs> we are. We can freaking <laughs> kill ourselves just trying to eat. Like to feed ourselves goes down the wrong pipe. So they call it. Yep. We got one pipe. Man, dolphins are built a lot better than us. Yep. I, that this is where I'm trying to get reincarnated to. <laughs> I would never think that that's where the noises come from. Man, <laughs> dolphins are so cool. They are so cool. I love dolphins. Uh, where are we? I mean, what are we thinking? <laughs> oh no, yeah, this is definitely a, a Ravenclaw, in my opinion. It's yeah, all, it's like so, like it's advanced enough that, like, not only do I breathe out of this, this is also where I, uh, you know, uh, can talk out of, and also, you know. Cause it, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. What do you What do you think? Here we go with Ravenclaw. All right. Cool. Then with that, we've sorted all the uh, various parts of the dolphin that at least you tossed at me before, Jesse. <laughs> and probably with, a few more, but that's okay. <laughs> they're they're the up. major ones. They're the major ones. Yeah. With that. Another cool thing about the blowhole. I just want to. Oh, oh yeah, no, 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 exactly. This might change everything. So, um, one thing that you will notice if you are watching dolphins, um. When they come up to breathe, sometimes it looks like there's a little puff of water that comes up. Right. So there's no water that's going to be in their lungs because that's called drowning. Um, (laughs) They don't want to drown just like we don't want to drown. What um, dolphins and whales do when they come to the surface is they actually exhale out. So that's 
what you're seeing that like um that blow of water is actually just the water that was on top of their bowl that they're the just kind of getting breaking. out yeah. of um out of the way and then they're taking a nice deep breath in so you're always going to hear an exhale before you he- hear the inhale mm-hmm. wow and it was crazy because working with them um they all breathe a bit differently so you could like sometimes i'd be like cleaning something and i would hear a particular dolphin exhale um and you're like, oh, that's Gary. And I, yeah, I would know which one it was. So. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. And, and also, is that like an easy way, like one of the first, like easiest ways to know if like a dolphin's under the weather or something? Because like their breathing might change or something? Um, not necessarily. Um, more so probably behaviorally would be like the a first indication. Oh, like mm. lethargic or what have you. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Man, there's so much. See, there's just so much to a dolphin. <laughs> There's so much indeed. It's like more than we'll be able to handle today. So I think we better wrap it up. Yes, yes. Thank you so much again for coming on the Thanks podcast, Jesse. Uh, where can people find more of you? Yeah, they need on the to interwebs. ask more pressing dolphin questions. Yeah, ask me dolphin questions. Uh, Twitter is <laughs> probably Twitter and Instagram. Um, either way, my handle is the Jesse Monster. So <laughs> find me on one of those. <laughs> All right. And then where can we uh, find uh, each other, Michael? <laughs> Uh, we can find each other read at Belated Media and That Dang Dingus. You'll figure out which one of us is which. All right, I'll check it out. It. <laughs> uh, if you'd love to leave us a review on iTunes or just tell your friends that, hey, there's this fun podcast that I listen to where people sort things into the various houses of Hogwarts and I'm learning a ton and also laughing along the way, please do that. That would, Yeah, that would be so tight. <laughs> the dolphins will love you forever. Yes. Oh, yeah. and, and me too. Uh, but until then, you have not earned my love. So, Ooh. bye. <laughs> I don't know. I shouldn't end it with me being angry at the audience. That's a bad move, right? Yes. Okay. I love you. <laughs>